welcome back to Mathatai. We're glad you're here today. My name is Mike, and uh, we are going through Psalm 119. If you missed the last study, I encourage you to go back and take a look at that maybe before we jump into this chapter. Uh, we did a brief uh, introduction to the uh, author, the theme, and the general structure of this chapter here that might uh, be insightful uh, as we continue through. Um, this is a chapter all about the Word of God, and there's a lot of different concepts that are laid out here, a lot of wonderful, very rich, and deep, meaningful uh, things that are given to us uh, to grow us in our appreciation of the Word and to grow us in our obedience to the Word. So that would be a great opportunity to look into that uh, as we jump here into Psalm 119. And I encourage you to grab a notebook, take some notes, and meditate on some of these things throughout the day uh, and see how the Word of God becomes a rich uh, addition to your life, something that can greatly bless you. And I know many of you are already studying the Word of God. Hopefully this can grow your appreciation and take you even deeper than you've been before. So we're going to start today in Psalm 119 verses 1 through 8. We're going to look at this first stanza. We noted this is an acrostic poem, meaning that each stanza, uh, the lines of each stanza begin with the letter of the alphabet, the successive letters of the alphabet. So in these first eight verses, we have the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph, beginning each of those lines. So as we read through, it doesn't come across in our English, but if you were able to read Hebrew, uh, each uh, verse here would begin with the letter Aleph. And then as we get into the next one, verses 9 onward, it's going to begin with the second letter, Beth, and then the third letter, Gimel, and so on and so forth. We'll keep discussing that as we go through. But let's read uh, verses 1 through 8 of Psalm 119 and dig in a little bit. It says, Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rules. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Now, we had looked at uh, Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 as a great introduction to uh, this Psalm 119. And the first uh, three verses really lay out the heart of this psalm. So uh, look back at Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3 with me for a moment. There it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. And he is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does he prospers. And I know that's the, de the desire for each of our lives, is that we would prosper. We would be like a tree planted and bearing fruit, that we would have beneficial lives, that we would really have all that God has in store for us. And here, the way we do that, verse 1 tells us that we don't walk in the way of the world. We don't follow sinners, the wicked, and the scoffers, but we walk in righteousness. We delight in the law of the Lord. Now, I don't know when the last time is that we talked about the law as being something delightful and joyous and, and, and freeing, but that's what the law of the Lord is meant to be. And so we're going to be talking about that in Psalm 119, how the law of the Lord is joyful to us. It is a pleasure to be submitted to the law of God because we are blessed by that. And the results of that submission bring blessing, bring grounding, bring fruit and prosperity. So let's talk about that as we uh, back in Psalm 119. And the psalmist here in Psalm 119 starts in a similar way. He says, blessed are those whose way is blameless. So first of all, the, the term blessed could simply mean, oh, how happy. There's a joy that comes from following the Lord, from walking in righteousness. So blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Now we saw last time, we, we noticed there were eight words that are repeated over and over again, and law was one of the first words we used there. The law of the Lord speaks of his general commandment to us. This is his design and desire for our life. His law could be that, that uh, general revelation through creation. It's the revelation that he's put on the heart of mankind through our conscience. It's that thing that is accessible to all people. 
That's the law of the Lord. And it also specifically refers to the direct, uh, specific revelation he gave to Israel through the Ten Commandments and through the Mosaic Covenants and, and, and Abrahamic Covenant and, and those that, that dealing with Israel through what we know as the Old Testament times, which is when this psalm was written. So these, the law of the Lord is that, that instruction from God to man in general. So when we walk in the law of the Lord, our way is blameless and we are blessed. And so we have a, a life that is pleasing to God, is joyful to others, and brings happiness and security for ourselves. And he continues on in verse 2, he says, Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. And so we, we have there that word testimonies, one of the second words we said, that these are uh, God's revealed law. It's his witness given to us. God has told us what, uh, that he's with us. He's told us that he's present. And, and we follow in his testimonies, the expression of himself, his revealed law. And we follow in that, and we are blessed when we keep those things. We keep those in faith. <clears throat> and this is not just an outward expression of obedience to the law. That's what the Pharisees got wrapped up in, and that's what they were condemned for by Jesus, is that they were keeping the law outwardly, but inside they were whitewashed tombs, Jesus said. They were full of dead man's bones. And so the, the second part of verse 2 says that, for those who seek him with their whole heart. So our obedience to God is not a mere outward action of adherence to the law, but we follow the law because our heart is in it. It's an expression of love towards God. We love God, therefore we obey God. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you have love for me, if you're genuinely in a relationship with me and want to please me and glorify me and you want this relationship to be right, then obey. Then follow my commands. Listen to my instructions and do it. Because it'll be a blessing for you and it will demonstrate your love towards God. And so this is not a mere outward appearance thing. This is an inward heart thing that we follow God with our heart. Verse 3 continues on to, to express this. He says, Who also do no wrong but walk in his ways. So we're following the path. We, we talked about the way again being another word there. This is just the plain rule of conduct. God has told us how to act. God has told us what we ought to do. And we're simply to walk in that. To walk in the path of righteousness that he's instructed for us. Blessed is that type of a person. Blessed is the one who is blameless and who walks in the law of the Lord, who keep his testimonies, and who with their heart seek him, not just with their actions, who do no wrong. That means they're not, they're not rejecting the law and doing their own thing, but they walk in God's ways. They're following the Lord. Blessed is that kind of person. And you and I want to be that kind of person. We want to be blessed. We want to enjoy the goodness of God. If we do that, we've got to follow the law of the Lord and his commands. Verse 4, he continues, he says, You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Now, we talked about he, he's commanded. These, this is a, a military order. This must be done. If you are going to obey your commanding officer, you do what your commanding officer says. Our commanding officer is Christ, is God himself, and he has told us what needs to be done. And what needs to be done is his precepts need to be kept diligently. Now that word precepts we saw were those things that God has entrusted to us. He has given us responsibilities. He's not forced us to do these things, but he's given responsibility over to us that we ought to obey and follow him. And so we need to diligently follow those precepts that he's given to us. We need to fulfill the responsibility to live out our human life before God in his ways, bringing glory to his name. That's our duty for this. And, and we need to be that kind of person. And the psalmist in the next verse, in verse 5, goes on to express the passion for this. He says, Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. He, he, you can hear the plea and the passion come out of the psalmist here. Oh, my desire, my, 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 my passion, my one aim in life is that I would be steadfast in keeping your, statu your statutes. I want to be, be passionate about this. I want to be unmovable in following the Lord. When we talked about the statutes there. Those are the engravings of the moral law of God on our heart. Lord, that I would not violate what you've put in my heart. 
Lord, I'm passionate about following you and I want to, to, to do all that you've called me to do. Oh, that I would not miss out on this in any way. That's the, the psalmist's heart there. He sees the benefits in verses 1 through 3 of walking with God, being blessed by that, of following him. We are blessed in that case. We see the obedience there in verse 4, that God has commanded us to do this very thing. And then in verse 5, we see the personal longing for obedience, that I really want to do this, Lord. I'm going to give it my all. With my whole heart, I'm going to give you all I have. And that's the expression of the psalmist towards the Word of God here. I pray that's our expression towards the Word of God. That his law is not burdensome and tedious, but we realize that by obedience and following his law, we receive blessing. We receive the peace, the joy, the love. All of those things that come from God are ours as we follow in his way and follow his precepts, follow his commands, follow his law. Then verse 6 after I do all of that, after I follow your way, after my passion and my desire and all of that stuff is to be blameless before you, he says, then I shall not be put to shame. I can stand before the Lord confident that I have done my part. I have followed God and I can stand confidently saying, Lord, I have given you all that you have asked for. And he says there that I'm not going to be put to shame having my eyes fixed on all your commandments lay them out before me and I can say, Lord, I have endeavored to follow them and I have given my all to obeying you. Now, in the New Testament, we know that we can't do that. We are unable to keep the law of God. However, the precepts, the, the principles of following God remain steadfast. God has given us commands that we are to follow and we can stand before God saying, Lord, I am on that path of righteousness. I'm walking in your ways. And when I fall short, I make it right again. I, I, I take the remedy in place. I confess my sin and you are faithful and just to forgive me through the blood of Christ on the cross. And we can stand before God shameless, confident, not in our strength, not in our ability to keep the law, but that God's law is perfect. And as I follow it to my best ability, I'm blessed and I'm righteous because Christ has given me his righteousness in following the law. So we fix our eyes on his commandments. We fix our eyes on all he's called us to do. And we stand blameless before the Lord with no shame. And he says in verse 7, here's what it leads to. I will praise you with an upright heart. My heart is right before you, God. I know I'm walking in your ways. I know I'm serving you. I'm giving you my whole heart so I can praise you unfettered and free. I can give you what you deserve, Lord. I'm not held down and weighted by the burdens of sin because I'm blessed because I'm walking in your ways. I can now freely offer you all that I have. And he says, I will keep your statutes. I do not utterly forsake me. Uh, you know, back in verse 7, he says, when I learn your righteous rules. So upon learning the rules of God, I praise God for that. And I keep his statutes and he will not utterly forsake me. God is now on my side. I'm right with God. I'm in fellowship with God. I'm in relationship with God. And he blesses that and he honors that. And I receive benefit. He receives glory. That's the point of the law of God. So be passionate about the law of God. Be fervent in living out the law of God. Walk in his ways and be blessed by God. Dig into his word and learn the law and follow him in every way possible and see what the Lord would do. The, the law is joyful to keep and it becomes pleasing to you the more you follow him. So I encourage you, follow hard after the Lord today. Give him your whole heart. Serve him out of love and joy, not out of obligation and duty. It's not a terrible thing to follow the Lord. It's a joyous thing. So find joy and delight in the law of the Lord today and see the blessing of God in your life. See the joy of God fill your life, the peace of God in your life as you serve him in all that you do. God bless you and we'll see you next time as we continue on through Psalm 119.